Hello everyone. For the we're here for a panel on the archiving history for the Ranting Foundation project. This is our second panel. Previously we had the director of the Nubarian Library from Paris, Boris Ajemian. And today we have with us two very distinguished guests. And we'd like to thank them for being with us today. As I said, there will be two speeches today. One from the director of the Armenian National Library from Armenia, Yerevan. We have Dr. Tigran Zarganyan with us, who has, for over 30 years, been working on libraries and archives management. He is the director of the National Library and also the dean of the Department of Library for the National University. He has a lot of publications for periodicals, a history of periodicals, etc. And if you check online, you can see a long list of publications, in fact. And Dr. Antranik Takesian is from Beirut. The Haigazian University, which we could call the only Armenian university in the world, he is an associate professor in the Armenian Studies Department. And also an institute of the university, the Center for Armenian Diaspora Studies. He's also the director of this institute, which is a newly founded institute. And in fact, he will be talking about that very institute today. And the only Armenian scientific journal outside of Armenia, he's in fact the editor. Well, the executive secretary for the scientific journal. So we will have brief speeches by them, and then we will have a Q&A session afterwards. Let's start with Dr. Tigran Zarganyan. His speech is entitled Connecting Diasporas via Digital Libraries and Challenges Specific to the 21st Century. So, good evening, Bari Yereko. Uh, firstly, thank you just for finding time and uh, being here pre present at uh, our presentations. And I want to express my thanks and gratitude to uh, to the uh, to the Handing Foundation uh, for inviting us for this wonderful uh, meeting, discussions, uh, sharing of ideas. Uh, uh, now, the topic of my presentation is connecting the diasporas via digital libraries, and just. And just uh, going ahead, I want to demonstrate you some statistical data because uh, in Turkey, Armenians uh, created a huge uh, uh, layer of cultural uh, heritage and uh, really we are proud for that. So just uh, look into these statistics. In Turkey, 725 Armenian periodicals are pr uh, produced. 
these are newspapers, 303, uh, magazines, 409, yearbooks, 13. Only in Istanbul, 506. So this is fantastic, you know, this is fantastic, just not having any statehood, just uh, being a community inside of such a huge uh, country, they managed to achieve such results. Uh, there is a very interesting layer of uh, Turkish uh, newspapers with Armenian letters. In Armenian, we say Hayatar Turkeren. So, from all this amount, 87 are uh, Turkish uh, newspapers with Armenian letters. So, the first Armenian newspaper which uh, was published here in Turkey, in Istanbul, that is Leroy uh, Gij, Nezitan Osmanian, 18. 32, uh, 32. So this is a, we can state as a date of establishment of first Armenian uh, newspaper here in Turkey. And uh, mm -hmm. oh. mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I want to mention that Jamanak, which uh, I hope you already know about that. That Jamanak newspaper is the oldest Armenian newspaper being pub published until nowadays. And uh, we know that date of establishment is 1908. So Armenians have played a very interesting, very active role in uh, um, uh, establishing uh, printing houses, in spreading literacy in Middle East, uh, also in Europe. And just please let me to go back. Uh, and if we will go to the origins of the printing, uh, I can say that uh, in Europe, uh, Johannes Gutenberg uh, introduced uh, printing press uh, somewhere in 1440s. Uh, Armenians, after some 70 years, Jacob Megapart, uh, so Jacob the Sinful, he after 70 years in Venice, he published first Armenian book. Uh, that is a, that uh, was a Friday book, uh, and we are proud for that because you know at that time just to develop Armenian letters, Armenian matrices, uh, to capital letters, small letters, uh, to do everything, and that was in a two colors, the book. You see, uh, this is a Friday book. So in 1512, he managed to publish uh, the book in two colors. Uh, so we celebrated 500th anniversary of Armenian book printing in 2012. And uh, what is interesting, Jamanak uh, wrote a huge articles, a series of articles about uh, Armenian book printing, about this 500th anniversary. But in uh, 1912, 1913, uh, Armenians were celebrating 400 years anniversary of Armenian book printing. And again, Jamanak was active there, and you can find a lot of interesting articles uh, again in Jamanak. So this is uh, really interesting that uh, uh, how proud they were for their language, for their culture, and how they were preserving that. Uh, actually, the first printing press modern printing press with movable uh, letters uh, came to Europe uh, from Korea. Uh, in 1377 in Korea they invented that machine and uh, what is interesting, Armenian was the person who brought that printing machine to Europe. So this is a book uh, published in 1910. Uh, Russian diplomat uh, Spatara Milescu, uh, Moldovan by the origins. Uh, he visited uh, uh, with um, delegation, with expedition to China, to Korea, and later he was uh, assigned as an ambassador in, to, to Beijing. So his memories, when returned back, he wrote a memories which were published in 1910. This is old Slavonic, and here you can see that what he is writing just uh, just there in a uh, red letters uh, that uh, Father Oderik uh, Anton Armenian Anton Hai Anton Armenian and Marco Polo they brought. 
brought uh, this printing technique, modern printing te technique, to Europe. They introduced in Europe, and later uh, Johannes Gutenberg just adopted that and uh, started to print the book. So the oldest extant book uh, which now we do have uh, published that is Jigji, that is published in South Korea, uh, in, in Korea, not in South Korea, and only one copy is uh, alive, which is in Bibliothèque Nationale de France. So here also Armenians uh, have a, a big uh, ac activities. Uh, the first print, uh, printing house in Persia was established in Yujulfa, Isfahan, uh, in 1636 by Bishop Khachatur Kesarazi. Abgar Depir uh, was a second publisher in Constantinople, uh, so in, in this city. Uh, so uh, now about the diasporas. Uh, Armenians, uh, without any statehood, just uh, traveling all over the world. Uh, the first things which they were doing that building a church, opening a school, and uh, attaching to that church and school, uh, and school a printing house, because they understood that to preserve uh, the religion, to preserve their language, to preserve their culture, they knew they need to publish some, something. And uh, what is interesting that all over the world, if we will travel, starting from Japan to Singapore, to India, to Persia, to Turkey, uh, to Russia, to Theodosia, uh, to European cities, uh, they were very easily exchanging the books, published books be between each other. This was done uh, through merchants. This was done uh, through Armenian travelers. Uh, so whatever was published in New Julfa, in Isfahan, that, that was very easily moving to Calcutta to Madras. From Madras, that was returning back to Russia. And uh, now, if we will travel all over the world, uh, we can see Armenian printed books in all uh, these regions. Uh, this was very interesting for us because uh, how they managed to change, to exchange these books between each other. Books, newspapers, uh, and until now that is happening. Until now that is happening. Uh, now, in 1919, National Library of Armenia was established. This was a result for uh, when First Republic, uh, Armenian First Republic uh, was uh, announced. That was 1918, May 28. So next year we will celebrate 100th anniversary of Armenian National Library. Uh, Armenians, before that, they, uh, they established a very good uh, network uh, between each other, which uh, I can uh, name as uh, spiritual Armenia. Uh, because uh, no any governance, no any state, no any ministries. Uh, so this spiritual Armenia was supporting all Armenians all over the world. After the establishment of the National Library of Armenia, the role somehow for printing materials uh, uh, transformed to the National Library of Armenia. Now our collections are about 6 million in the National Library of Armenia. More than 1 million are Armenian publications. This, uh, these are books, periodicals, uh, postcards, ephemera. Uh, thesis and dissertation, so enough, uh, enough reach. So I mean, in the National Library of Armenia, I can say that that is the biggest uh, repository of Armenian printed materials all over the world. All uh, first uh, publications uh, are in our library, so I can just show you. This is the first printed Armenian book. Uh, 1512. Uh, this is uh, Asdarar, the Heralds, uh, published in uh, 1794 in Madras, in India. Uh, this is the first Armenian Bible, this one, uh, in Amsterdam. Uh, and uh, until uh, the end of this year, we are celebrating 350th anniversary of Voskan, of Voskan, Voskan Bible. The second one is a second printed Armenian Bible. 7050 this happens here in this city in Constantinople and uh, Petros Latinazi he uh, was 
as a, a publisher of uh, this Bible. So can you imagine, second Bible, Armenian Bible, was published here. How active those are. Uh, this is the first printed Armenian map, uh, Amsterdam, 1695. Uh, again, for this map, what is interesting, all terms, all names of oceans, rivers, countries, mountains, everything is in Armenian. So in 1695, uh, two brothers, one and the two brothers, just they managed to translate all these terms into Armenian. Now it is for us uh, sometimes very, very difficult to find a good Armenian name for some country, for some small region. Uh, but uh, they managed to do everything, and what is interesting, Australia already is there, totally empty. Uh, only two settlements are there, but uh, with Armenian names those are. And the name of Australia at that time was New Holland. Not uh, now, uh, as I mentioned, uh, all diasporas were having connections with each other, and spiritual Armenia was working very nice. Uh, now, uh, National Library of Armenia is uh, trying to preserve, to gather, to preserve all Armenian print, print materials uh, in uh, their collections. And, uh, just I want to stop uh, your attention into our activities or joint uh, cooperation with uh, Istanbul, uh, with uh, Armenian community here, and uh, with Randing Foundation. The first one is with Jamanak newspaper. Uh, I think that first cooperation with police, we, standard, uh, we started with Jamanak, thanks to Arago Chunyan. So all issues, all current issues of Jamanak newspaper, we are receiving receiving as a PDF files, and we are mounting on our website. Uh, also, we are receiving the paper-based version. Uh, what uh, issues are missing, just we are trying to find all over the world in other repositories to, to digitize and to bring them to the National Library of Armenia. Uh, Ara Gochunyan also is very active in bringing books to Yerevan. So each time he is coming, the first visit is to the National Library of Armenia and a huge package or several packages of Armenian books just he is donating to our library, not only for the National Library of Armenia, but also for the regional libraries. So really this is a good uh, example of when a person is having a willing, when it's open-minded person, how all of us can be benefit from uh, such a cooperation. Uh, uh, another good example is uh, our cooperation with the Library of Armenian Patriarchate of Police. Uh, here we are having a Deccan Vagashak Serovpian, who is in charge uh, for the library and museum. Uh, look, here in uh, their library, they do have uh, a lot of newspapers and periodicals which are absent in National Library of Armenia. So we understand that it's impossible to move all these uh, print copies to Armenia because they should remain here. Only one copy is there. But uh, digitization is a solution for that. So he is digitizing all those missing uh, issues and sending to us. So, and we are having very large audience. Uh, our uh, readers, our patrons, online patrons all over the world are uh, having access, free access to all these databases. Uh, and now a little bit about our cooperation with, with Handing Foundation. Uh, so academicians, librarians from Turkey through the grant from the foundation has visited several times the National Library of Armenia. This is, of course, a very great event. Uh, two bibliographers from the National Library of Armenia as researchers in 2007 for one month, they uh, have a visit here to Ataturk Library. And the findings, uh, so they checked uh, there is a very good Armenian uh, collection of Armenian books and periodicals. They managed to check Armenian books, Armenian book titles, until 1930s. And they found uh, 58 new titles, which were not indicated in any bibliographic lists. Uh, so can you imagine? When we are finding during a year one or two titles, new titles, it is 
astonishing thing, thing for us, but 85 titles just they, during their stay here they uh, managed to discover. And I am sure that uh, if they will continue this work uh, and if uh, Randing Foundation will continue to support this activity and if we will continue to check after uh, 1930s, I am sure that much more titles, much more books uh, we will discover and later we will uh, continue these activities with periodicals, with newspapers and uh, magazines. Today I visited uh, the library. Uh, we have a meeting with administration. Uh, I expressed my thanks, invited them to Yerevan to visit our library, to see Yerevan, because you need these uh, mobilities are very fruitful just to introducing to each other our organizations, our heritage, because in our library we, we have uh, some publications, uh, Ottoman publications, and uh, that should be interesting for them. And also this is a good uh, field for cooperation, for new plans, uh, etc. Uh, together with foundation, we already are discussing this issue several times. We are starting a new project, Hushamadzian, and uh, maybe Vahab later can in more details uh, tell about that, but soon we will explain. So uh, this example was thanks to Rounding Foundation, uh, the results which we achieved uh, during this short time. But uh, again, spiritual Armenia, National Library of Armenia, internet, electronic email system, I don't know these communications, are helping us to find, to receive new titles uh, or in digital form are the originals from other parts of the world. So here are just a brief description of what we find, uh, what we received uh, periodicals uh, during the recent two years. And uh, by the way, these two titles Babylon and Nive. Uh, those we found in uh, Sweden. Uh, these are uh, Assyrian newspapers. Uh, the, in 1920s, Assyrians emigrated from um, Hajen to ba Bastan. And uh, the knowledge of Syrian language was uh, very bad with them. So as Armenians were publishing uh, books and periodicals uh, in Turkish using Armenian letters, uh, such as all these Assyrians were fluent in Armenian and their young generation very badly knew their mother language. So they started to publish uh, these two newspapers in Armenian language using Assyrian letters. Again, very interesting how this transformation of knowledge of skills is moving from one nation to another nation. In any case, these are Armenian newspapers because of that we are, uh, that we are indicating. And uh, in our, uh, we are having in our academy institution uh, of uh, literature, uh, one young uh, PhD student, defendant dissertation, PhD student on Armenian Syrian relations and Babylon was uh, one of the chapters. He was uh, astonished. So uh, from Syria, from London, 1966, uh, 1965. Uh, uh, some examples of the books, uh, donations from diaspora, these are the books and these are the digital images of uh, other books which they can't uh, donate to the uh, library. Uh, now, current state, how we are uh, working with uh, our diasporas. Uh, so we are developing two repositories, Armenian book and Armenian uh, periodicals, and all statistics which I brought, which I uh, show you uh, at the beginning of my presentation, was taken from this Armenian periodicals uh, database. Uh, 27 million digital pages of periodicals and 9,100 book titles, although they are digital Everything is in open access domain, free of charge. You can use, you can download, you can republish all, all of that. I don't think that Armenology, Armenian, this printed heritage uh, should be a subject for a business. So everything is free just. And we are having a very big audience, especially in US. Uh, 
lot of people from police, Armenians, researchers, always they are writing, please uh, digitize this issue, please digitize that issue, because in the US they can't find this magazine. So we are uh, uh, doing acti active uh, move movements with each other, which is other. Uh, uh, now we are planning to develop, starting from this year, with Poznan Supercomputing uh, Center uh, that is in Poland, uh, with uh, support from European Union, uh, all Armenian digital libraries, so everything will be in one place. Uh, that is a new challenge. And technologically, and as a methodical approach, and for cataloging, and for catalogers, but uh, we should try that. And some, just some ideas. At the end of my <coughs> presentation, suggestions I uh, want to share with you. So National Libraries Armenia is organizing training courses each year for the representatives of diaspora. And we are inviting our colleagues, librarians, or IT specialists from diaspora institutions to participate. Uh, main topics uh, are digital libraries, machine readable cataloging, so um, about modern libraries. In 2018, Mother Sea of Holy H. Miazin, and this year, a National Library of Armenia will provide fifth international conference of Armenian librarians. Again, we are inviting our colleagues uh, to be present here, but not only Armenians, also because uh, from Turkey today uh, I uh, asked our Turkish colleagues, just also you can visit, you can participate, you, you can do a presentation, because uh, these are unique platforms just to uh, know each other. The third one, uh, you know, as a result of military conflicts, we know what happens in Syria with Armenian community in Syria. Emigration, economic crisis, our communities, in our communities, we already have abandoned or forgotten libraries. Uh, huge layer of dust is there. Uh, two years before this time, I was in Gerla, uh, in Transylvania. Uh, the second uh, a stage of a church is totally Armenian library. library. Fantastic books are there, but all of them are under a huge layer of dust. So nobody is opening those books already because community is empty now. So for these abandoned and forgotten libraries, if you have uh, information about such libraries, please uh, keep us informed. Because with the help of the Ministry of Diaspora, Ministry of Culture, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, uh, National Library of Armenia, Armenia will try somehow to save these uh, books, these periodicals, to take them back to Armenia, to preserve, I don't know, to work with them. Uh, and the fourth one will be mass digitization of Armenian prints. Uh, in National Library of Armenia is in process. And we are planning to allocate uh, digitizing equipment uh, to our diaspora, Armenological centers, which are active, uh, which, are, which have enough manpower to participate in these projects and have good collections. Uh, so, for developing all Armenian digital library, and as a first approach, we are planning to uh, supply with such equipment Patriarchate of Police, Patriarchate of Jerusalem, until us. Let's see what will happen. And uh, it seems that I came to the end of my presentation, so thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Zakaria, for the interesting presentation. I have questions, and probably the audience <laughs> also has questions, but we, we will keep those for uh, later, mm -hmm. so we can combine. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good morning. Uh, I'll start with three.
three uh, thanking messages. The first one, I'll be impolite a bit, and uh, my first uh, salutation will go to the youngsters, <coughs> the students of Getronagan. If there are students of any other uh, Istanbul Armenian schools, then I salute them as well. Because I myself and I am sure our, um, uh, their parents and uh, the, our generation believe that uh, the students are our living capital. Our children are our living capital. So we rely on them, we believe in them, and we support them for a better future. Thank you for being with me. The second, uh, the second. Uh, the salutation goes to, again, to Randink to thank them because, well, I did thank, thank them a couple of days ago when I was having my uh, first lecture, uh, but, I, but I want to thank them again because then my experience was different and today it is much different because I met some, several people and I felt that I learned a lot, I saw a lot, I observed a lot, and I thank you for this wonderful opportunity and I really mean it. The third, um, salutation and thank you goes to the Istanbul Armenians. No, not the children. <laughs> because they were very welcoming, they were very smiley, and they were very friendly, they were very brotherly. I wasn't expecting anything different, of course, but Yanni, I have to thank them for this. Now, I'll start uh, my... my, my uh, my lecture, it's not the lecture, actually, well, my talk. My talk will be about uh, the Diaspora Research Center at Gazian University. It's a brief account. Uh, but let me start with an introduction about the Gazian University. Uh, Gazian University was, a, uh, was founded in 1955. Uh, Initially, it was uh, meant to be a, the first two years of the university, freshmen and sophomore classes. It was meant to, it was intended to uh, um, uh, educate students, bring up, produce students, graduates who would work in, who would have, uh, actually, who would work in the community. They tried to prepare graduates who would serve the community. So they were talking about, I mean, there was, the their main ambition was to have uh, teachers, to prepare teachers, and to pre prepare teachers and preachers. Okay? But eventually it developed very shortly after it developed, and I may say that uh, from the very uh, from the first day, several non Armenian students did register their names in the university, in the college, then it was a college. Uh, in the early 60s, 1964, the university, the college was uh, officially uh, recognized and its diploma was already a university dip diploma. In the 1990s, 1996 in precise, the, the college became Haigazian University College and uh, eventually it turned into a university, uh, into a Haigazian University. It's, as Valken as, uh, said, it's the only university uh, in the diaspora, and you want, if you want to know about its, uh, uh, its quality, well, you may ask uh, if you like him as a quality guy, then we have a good quality at Haigazian. Now, uh, this is all I have to say regarding Haigazian University. Uh, why, well, I'll, I'll start with now, I'll start with the Armenian Diaspora Research Center. Why did we try to establish this center? Because we had a problem. We were facing a very serious problem. Uh, back in 2011, when the uh, center was being established, uh, we felt that, well, there is a problem in Iraq, there is a problem in Egypt, there is a problem in Jerusalem. Uh, Israel, there's a problem in Syria. Uh, we were already witnessing the fact that the Armenians, the number of the Armenians in the, in the Middle East was decreasing. And we were afraid, actually we were very concerned that this decrease will create a problem in the sense that we, don't, we will lack the history of these communities. So we had to do something. We had to address this very serious question because uh, previously I said, and I will repeat myself, that you know a huge number of armies uh, lived in the Middle East. In 1975, there were around over 500,000. Half a million Armenians lived in the Middle East. Now it's the, the picture is very different. So you're talking about a huge number of Armenians who lived and produced. They didn't eat only cheese and uh, bread, but they produced as well. Produced in every sense of the word. 
So if you don't write about them, then they didn't exist as if. And particularly we know that the, the communities are being wiped out to a certain extent, okay, or getting dwindled, the numbers is, are decreasing. So you may face the difficulty of having a good history of these communities. So this was a very good reason why we tried to establish this center. As I said, officially it was launched in, on September 11, 2011, uh, but the official inauguration was uh, the, a month, almost a few months later, January the 25th, 2012. Um, Someone called Yercho Samuelian, he provided us with the amount, he gave us around $55,000, and I'm being very honest there, uh, very clear. Uh, he, and he promised to pay, uh, to, to give uh, the same amount for the next 10 years. Unfortunately, he stopped in the fifth year, but we are continuing. Mr. Yercho Samuelian is this, is, is this uh, man. He believed in uh, culture, and he was very supportive for, for that. Uh, that's the inaugural. Uh, part, and this is the ceremony actually. The first one is, the, the one who is talking is, uh, then he was the president of the Lebanese University. The next one is the president of Haigazian University, Reverend uh, Dr. Paul Haidosjan. Then the prelate of, um, uh, the, the Armenian Orthodox prelate of Beirut, uh, Mr. Yercho Samuelian, uh, Ambassador Ashot Kocharian of uh, Armenia in Lebanon, and uh, member of parliament, Mr. Hagop Pakraduni. Um, so this was the inauguration. What did we aim? Uh, the aims were very, very clear cut. To study diverse aspects of the Armenian diaspora communities in the Middle East and the rest of the world. But our focus was mainly the Middle East. And as, the, as you say, um, uh, maybe we haven't mentioned here, but it, is, it was very clear that we tried to uh, cover the story of, post -gen of the post-genocide era, because we knew a lot about the genocide. Okay, a lot has been written and was re was being written then, but uh, the post-genocide era, particularly the 1920s up to the 1940s, when uh, we settled, our grandfathers settled in Beirut or the region. Okay, there were no eyewitness eyewitnesses anymore, and we know, knew very extremely really very little about it, and it was very strange. Uh, lately, I came across I came across uh, two um, two eyewitness accounts. Two people, one from Zeytun, the other one is from Caesarea, had written there, actually they were orphans then, they, they were exiled with their parents from in 1915, and they had written their memoirs. And strangely, very strangely, the memoir stops, in both cases, it stops the moment they reach the orphanage. Tayyip, after the orphanage, didn't they have a life? It was the life of revival, which is equally important. And we haven't covered it. So we tried to address this very serious issue. Of course, we haven't uh, um, fully addressed it, but I mean, we are trying to address this issue. Now, the second point is the particular fo focus on their history, culture, and issues of identity and integration. Actually, we came there, we came to the Middle East, we were, we were living in ghettos or Armenian settlement areas, but eventually, the second, third, particularly as of the third generation, we got integrated into the local community. So, what about this evolution, okay, re re um, the change, okay, of our identity, the reconstruction of our identity? Who will write about it? How are we going to know what happened? Oh, yeah. Yeah. If I am 57, yes, I am 57 years old, my life doesn't, is not, does not include only my, the, 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 the last 10, day, 10 years of my life. I have a life of 50 years before. The whole part, all, all parts of my life are equally important. At this moment, maybe the, this last, last decade is important, but it is based on my previous life. 
So the same goes with the, with the communities. Okay? So this is why we tried to work on this. The third po point was to conduct and publish primary research that will further, underst uh, that will further understanding of the diaspora and Armenian uh, culture. We have a problem, a very serious problem. You, you, you look at uh, the local Lebanese history books and you find nothing about Armenians. This is very strange. Are we a part of this Lebanon, or we are not a part of this Lebanon? It, it, uh, uh, we are to blame. We, as Armenians, are to blame. But the, the Lebanese Arabs have to be blamed as well. And it goes both ways. I, the integration uh, um, is expected to be on both sides. So we are a part, so we have to be included there. But we have been living in a ghetto, so we had this problem. We had to overcome this. We have to, we have to address this issue as well. And of course, to protect the, our heritage. In for 100 years, we had created a lot in Beirut. We had produced a lot in Beirut and the Middle East. So how to, how to um, sa salvage and uh, Preserve this, this heritage. And of course, organize annual conferences regarding this aspect so that we can draw attention to this very important uh, problem. So now we started our, our um, yearly uh, conferences. The first three conferences were about, uh, the first one was about Armenia diaspora relations yesterday, today, and tomorrow. How is it going to, how are they going to develop? We just tried to raise uh, questions and we tried to see that how can we benefit from the existence of Armenia and the existence of the diaspora? How could we benefit uh, of the, each, this crew, if each of these two entities had powers? Let's make good use of these resources. The next two conferences were about uh, identity, and that one, okay, in 2013 and 2013, actually, both of them. Next conference was about, the next conference was about, uh, look, I have a friend, he, say, he states that, well, you know, internet has been created for the Armenians. And I say, why? Because the Armenians have been the, not one of the most, the most dispersed nation of the world. Okay, there are around 35, 35 million Chinese in the world, but relatively speaking, we are more dispersed than anyone else maybe, most probably. So, uh, internet could help a lot. So our first, con uh, our, our first conference was about how to communicate, what is the trans transnational communication, what are the transnational communication lines between these two, be between these different, different uh, diasporas? How do we communicate with each other? Uh, what channels do we use? Are those channels only party, party channels? Okay, if they are so, they are very weak because the parties are not that strong and the parties are not, yeah, I mean, they are very elitist sort of uh, channels. If we are talking about church channels, not that good because Antilias and, and uh, H. Meadzin, you know the, the good relation, the friendly relation, the brotherly relation that exists between them. What, what, what is left? Khramiagan relations? Again, so this was a serious question. How do we communicate? If the channels are weak between us, if there is weak network, then we have a problem, a very serious problem. So this was the first conference. Then we started our conferences about Armenians of Lebanon, Armenians of, uh, Armenians of Lebanon, Armenians of uh, Syria in 2015, Armenians of Jordan in 2016, and Armenians of Iraq in 2017. Oh, yes. Am I? Yes. Now, this year we are having a conference on Armenians of uh, Egypt, Ethiopia, and Sudan. And we are having two sections of this conference. A part of it in April will, will take place in um, Egypt. The second part, part will take place in Beirut, just to try to promote the idea of uh, history and self-knowledge uh, in, in that uh, community. Now I'll show some pictures. This is the 
uh, first conference, uh, you see the group picture. Uh, at the center is uh, Professor Richard Ovanesian, uh, Professor uh, Claude Mutafian, Reverend uh, Haidostian, and the group. We were 24. So 24 panelists participated in our first co conference of the, the Conference of Lebanon. And it was not only a conference, uh, it wasn't only a conference. We had some uh, exhibitions. Okay? So uh, don't forget the number. Around 24 uh, P panelists participated. A Six, five or six of them were youngsters. One of them, where is Bahakan? Yes, right behind the bearded guy, okay, is Bahakan. What, what I am trying to say is that we tried to support youngsters as well and give them the chance to come up to stage, prepare papers, okay, and do a good job, and they did actually. This is still the first uh, conference. As I said, the, the, the group, uh, the table, uh, the, the audience. We had an exhibition of uh, discs. I don't know. The, the, the older generation knows the discs. The Armenian discs of uh, the 60s and 70s in Beirut. When I say discs, I mean um, song discs. Uh, LPs, records, yes, the records. Okay. Uh, then. We started the second, the 2015, the Armenians of Syria. He, uh, Professor Simon Payaslian was the guest speaker. Okay, this is the group picture. We had the, uh, the prelate of uh, Aleppo, uh, Archbishop Shahan Sarkisian. We had the prelate, prelate of uh, Damascus, uh, Reverend Haidosian, and the whole group, a good number of uh, uh, scholars from Armenia who were originally from Syria. We had 34 panelists. Someone has to calculate. The youngsters would. Maral, uh, please, uh, 24 in Lebanon, uh, during the Lebanon conference, 34 during the Syrian conference. Don't forget that. Just add them to each other, please. Now, this is another picture of the... Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. This is a section of the conference. Um, you see the group again, Professor Mutafian. He is a, a good uh, uh, presence all the time. Now, the next one was <coughs> the conference on Iraq. Uh, but let me go back and I, show, I, I want to show you something. The picture up there, he, he, uh, the, the guy there, the man there actually, his name is, uh, I will not remember at this moment, but this is a picture of the um, uh, Jordan conference. Yes, this is the Jordan Conference. Professor Mutafian spoke about the Karak Armenians. The Jordan Conference, 18 people participated, 18 scholars. Okay? Now, uh, still I can't remember his name at this moment, but he had studied in Armenia, he had studied engineering. Okay? And I asked him to write about uh, uh, the Irbid Armenians, an area in Jordan. He was originally, his parents were from Irbid, so he wrote the paper participated in the con con uh, conference, and we haven't published the book yet, but he has already published a book on Erbid Armenians. So we had a problem. We, you, you, I just want to mention this, that we started this, con this uh, center, Yerdaretsi, we started this center having in mind to address a problem. Now, him already addressed a part of the problem. He published his research. He did the research. He developed it. Okay. He published a book on Armenians of Irbid. Irbid. It's very interesting, and we feel very proud of him. Now, this is the last conference so far. The last the, the conference we did. This is the conference of Iraq. You see at the center uh, the prelate of Beirut, uh, Shaheser Pazan, uh, the prelate of, uh, the, of Catholic Armenians. Uh, next to him is uh, the ambassador of, Arme uh, of, of Armenia in Lebanon. Next to him is uh, uh, Dr. Amadouni Virabian, the director of uh, the uh, National Archives of Armenia. On the other side, you, the third uh, bishop or archbishop actually is the prelate of Iraq. And a group, good number of Iraqi Armenians were with us and participated in the conference. We had 34 panelists. So far, during four conferences, just imagine how, what's the number, Maran? 110 panelists. So we created, we, we 
promote, we had in the creation of 110 academic papers regarding the Middle East. It's not only the creation of 110 papers, but the creation of a wonderful communication between these groups. Now, just two other things. These are some of the books we published. The first two up, Spirka Kiduchun, Dare Kirk, and Haigagan Inknutian Khantirner, these were two books published in Armenia, okay, which included, uh, one of them is about uh, uh, the idea of Armenian identity. Both of them had, had the materials of uh, uh, the conference proceedings. The third one is Haigagan Anter Samanayin Darazagan Tuna, the transnational Armenian space and the communications, modern communications, 2013. This is the book of uh, the Lebanese Armenians. Uh, it's uh, 340 pages. And last but not least, now, this is the center. So far I spoke about the center a bit. Now, uh, alongside this center, we established a Haigazian University Press, okay, which started publishing. And these are some of the books we published. The first one is Armenian Participation in the, Armenian Je in the Lebanese Legislative Elections. A uh, very interesting book by Dr. Maserlian. Second one is a bibliography of the Lebanese Armenian book. The third one is a critical thinking in, in Armen Lebanese Armenian schools. This is uh, Dr. Nora Arisian about uh, Arab eyewitness accounts of the Armenian genocide. The, the fourth one up is uh, Dr. Vahram um, Shemesian's uh, book about the Musada Armenians between 1919 and 1939. Yeah, Armenians living, the, the Musada Armenians here uh, between those days, dates. And uh, Parser Ganachian. And last but not least, uh, an, another group of books. The first one is Anunov Dabris. He's a, he, he is, I think he's from Sivas. He's a crypto Armenian. He lived in Anjar, Anunov Dabris. He, he, he writes about his father. And his father has, was forced to change name three times. The second one is towards Golgotha. Um, the story of a, of a parent who, from Rodosto, from uh, Bardizag area, sorry, uh, and the, the story of, its, uh, of their exile. I will not speak about the third, but I want to mention the fourth, and that's all I want to speak today. This is an interesting book. Uh, during 2015, uh, the Haigazian University Armenian Studies students sent letters to the Armenian schools of Lebanon and said that, well, we want to publish a book about your family story. Your family story. And we collected over 220 stories. 220 stories. Out of those 220 stories, we chose, we selected 101, because the date already was uh, late, and uh, this was published in 2016. So, Im Andani means the story of 101 young children writing about their, parent, their family story. Okay, with their picture and uh, two or three pages. And this is all, and thank you. Thank you. Evit. Um, Before opening the floor to, to questions, I have a question each, if, if I may. Uh, one to Dr. Zargaryan. Um, one practical question, and uh, because you, we know that you are uh, very practical in your in the work that you do, and everyone that knows you knows this uh, this quality of yours. And önce şeyi söyleyeyim. Well, first uh, he mentioned Hushamadians and said that I would uh, talk about them. So very quickly about that. As you know, there are the Hushamadian books. These are memories and memoirs uh, from across Turkey, the communities that went elsewhere and settled. It's books of the cities or towns that they emigrated from, and the largest collection is about 400 books, almost all of them. are present in the National Library, except for a very few. 
And while we were there during talks, I asked why these weren't being prioritized and why they're not being digitized and put up. And Dr. Zarganyan immediately called his colleagues and started the work on this. And we have a book that was missing from our cultural heritage work uh, from the Sivas to Cesar church, uh, the, the village, and they sent us a PDF in three days, which we couldn't find in Turkey. I'd like to uh, thank him for that as well. What can the libraries in uh, Istanbul, there are many libraries. We are one, and there are a huge number. The schools have their libraries. Do, do, do you, uh, the small unions, the organizations have their libraries. What can they do to practically uh, ease the, uh, is the issue of cataloging and digitizing their, uh, maybe before digitizing, cataloging their collection? This is a question to you, and uh, I will ask later on. One, two, after the question. Uh, so just uh, once more the question. Um, what can the libraries here, the small libraries, uh, do, uh, small or big, by the way, uh, there are many representatives of libraries from uh, the community mm -hmm. here. What can they do to, to ease the process of cataloging their uh, mm -hmm. collections? Okay. Uh, actually, modern technologies are allowing uh, us, librarians or uh, computer specialists, just to go inside of your electronic catalog, card catalog. Find your uh, books, your records in electronic format, bibliographic description, and download those into your computer. So this is saving a huge amount of a time, uh, errorless uh, records you are receiving, and uh, very fast the cataloging is going. Uh, so actually, we can support our diaspora libraries in two ways. Firstly, we can give you free of charge software, it depends how big is your library. Because now in the world, uh, especially in the libraries, there is a movement on adopting or on uh, implementing free open source software products, library oriented products in the libraries. In Armenia, totally we are using, we rejected, we canceled all commercial products, only free open source uh, software products we are using. So we can suggest you we can give you a list of uh, open source library automation products. You can uh, choose from that list. Also, we can open our portals, library portals, and later you can go inside, you can find uh, the books which you want, and you can just electronically transform those books into your catalog. After that, it will be just very small work to put your uh, call numbers and nothing else. So instead of losing uh, 40 minutes, 40 minutes for cataloging one book, uh, you will just lose um, five minutes and that is just searching and downloading the records. So I see these two big directions on our cooperation. And with Istanbul, uh, Armenian centers and actually our diaspora centers all over the world. And practically now we are starting to support them in, in this work. The third one, a little bit difficult, we can host your catalogs on our servers. But you know, this needs uh, very fast stable internet, you, can, you should go inside, you should catalog. Uh, I wouldn't recommend that, but uh, that, uh, that uh, again is acceptable for us because we are developing union catalog of Armenian libraries, more than five million items we already have in that catalog. Uh, so up to you, up to you to understand which direction you will prefer. Thank you. So this is food for thought for, for all the libraries yes. in, uh, everywhere and yes. uh, collaboration opportunities many uh, for us. I wanted to ask about the eyewitness accounts. It's very interesting for us, especially yes. in Turkey now, there is a huge trend towards more using oral histories and eyewitness accounts as primary sources. And when you were, you were saying about the students, actually the Getraga students sitting here now, they also do that somehow. I'm not, I, I, I'm not qualified to, take, to talk about their projects, but I know that they go and it, it, through their Armenian language classes, they do this research mm -hmm. uh, with their parents as well. So 
it's very similar to what the, uh, what you did. Um, um, also, the Hunting Foundation does it uh, has its oral history program, and these panels are actually part of that huge mm -hmm. um, uh, pr project of understanding how can we proceed and what can we do. And we have four published volumes on oral history yes. already, and uh, we have uh, still a huge uh, way to go. Of course, uh, do you see any uh, pr prospects of collaboration on between the schools or the universities project? Are you planning on continuing that uh, that what you did? Are you planning to put the the whole like you published 100 and there are also others yes what what the, where is it going um, well it was a uh, it was a limited project okay we did it and that's all we did uh, but uh, uh, I think uh, now what I am doing do, during my classes is that uh, every time I have a course Okay, I ask the students whether the course is directly related to Armenian history or not. Okay, they have to they have to present a paper about their family history. So this is what we are doing at the I'm doing at this stage. Uh, regarding uh, oral history, I want to remind you that we have I mean. Uh, we have a good number of oral histories, some maybe 120, between 80 and 120, and we are uh, prepared to co collaborate with the Randing Foundation if uh, they need, if you need. I mean, we, there, there can be there, there can be a common ground that we can work in that regard. Unfortunately, unfortunately, you're lucky. The, the Randing Foundation is lucky in the fact that you have already a good number of. Uh, uh, administrators and work uh, people researchers here unlike us because we are very few extremely few uh, one of the thoughts we are having actually plans that we haven't been able to materialize is that we want to go to Burj Hamoud and have a sort of a, uh, an office temporary office for a, for a, seri a, seri a, a period of time and just announce that whoever has anything regarding the past and he wants to get rid of it, let them bring to us. Even if they know their history, let them come and tell and we'll be able to, I mean, we just want to record it. We have these plans, but unfortunately, there are so many things to do. Still, we haven't been able to prioritize that yet. Uh, but with the schools, it's very, uh, it's very interesting. Maybe they can do, we can do something in that regard. It would be very interesting. Yes, it would be a, a very interesting uh, collaboration with, between different schools of the diaspora, uh, producing a, a yearbook sort of with a, with a number of compositions or uh, research papers or something similar. Yes, yeah. yes, it would be extremely good. Yes. Thank you. Thank you.